Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Vector podcast. Today, we have a new segment called Stories from Support, where we're highlighting our wonderful people on our technical support team. Um, today, I'm joined by Felipe, a technical support engineer. And Felipe and I are just going to be chatting through some uh, questions just to get to know him and put a human face to our wonderful technical support team. Felipe, you want to say hello to everyone? Hello, everybody. Awesome. OK, so I'm going to start off with the first question. Can you tell me more about yourself, such as your background in cybersecurity, where you're from, and any fun facts or hobbies that you have? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I'm from Brazil originally. I grew up in Miami, and then I ended up moving uh, to Austin for mm -hmm. and working with Vectra about five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, my background in cybersecurity really started when I joined Vectra. I um, used to work for different uh, companies before, like a uh, uh, disaster recovery company, particularly high availability software mm -hmm. that ended up being bought out and bought out and bought out again. So <laughs> right yeah. before I left, they kind of were doing some cybersecurity stuff with uh, mm -hmm. WebRoot. Um, a lot of people would have known them. Uh, prior to that, it was a uh, hotels company. Um, so I, I just kind of bounced around different companies, always mm -hmm. involved in support engineering, mm -hmm. though. Um, not uh, cybersecurity focused until I joined Vectra. I see. And a little fun fact. Um, I think you got me with that one. Uh, <laughs> Anything works here. Oh, um, yeah, let me think on it, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, we'll we'll end the the podcast with your your fun fact then. Okay, as you're thinking through that, I also wanted to know a little bit more about your day to day at Vectra, um, what you do, and what parts, if any, are the most fulfilling for you. So my normal day to day. Um, is really engaging with customers and mm. we get a list of our different uh, customer issues that come up right in way of tickets that they've entered. So I'll go in through there, see what the current state is of the overall backlog, like what still needs attention, what doesn't, and then I'll also touch upon uh, some that I've been particularly working on. Um, from that point on, as we kind of work through customer tickets will need to engage with different teams, yeah. uh, engineering, product management, um, our wonderful and great MDR team. Yeah. Um, so a lot of engagement within Vectra. And then I also, in my role as a principal support engineer, I have some separate um, projects that I work on for mm -hmm. Uh, some internal operations. So I'll start uh, working on that, whether it's doing some automations to improve life for all of our support engineers or collaborate on other projects um, within the company, like interdepartment stuff. So it kind of mm -hmm. varies. Um, I, I like that there is some variety there. And, mm -hmm. um, this natural when you are dealing with you know, customer provided tickets where, you know, one person might be facing something for the first time that us as a company or them as a customer has seen. So mm. they always have uh, novelty, which is, is fun. And I kind of really enjoy that. Um, that leads to, you know, kind of some of the parts that, that I enjoy and what it fulfills is mm -hmm. not being stuck in that mundane day to day, yeah, um, where it's the same thing over and over again, or um, sorry to our finance team, but like having to do end of the month <laughs> accounting or something yeah. like that, where you know what's coming, when it's coming, yeah. and you just dread it. So I yeah. like that uh, variety. Um, mm -hmm. And then also I'm very passionate about just helping people. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like um, solving a challenge for somebody. Um, whether it's a customer that's facing an issue and they're on an urgent deadline or, you know, have a change request that's happening, but they ran into an issue. I like being able to help them in that um, mm -hmm. and then seeing how, you know, their joy or, or 
how happy they are with it afterwards. So I, I really enjoy that service mm -hmm. part of, of my position. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's pretty common along uh, among your entire like team, right? Like you guys are all like problem solvers. So you guys find a lot of fulfillment and enjoyment out of that. And also the fact that like every day looks, no, your day to day looks different every day. So that's like very exciting and keeps you on your toes and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, to be in uh, support in any capacity or any service, I think number one, you need to be um, have enjoyment in helping people and helping others um, and really kind of like part support in particular uh, a lot of problem solving. So you yeah. need to have joy in, in problem solving because otherwise you will definitely dread your job um, or what you're doing if you <laughs> yep. don't enjoy helping people. It, it, it's what you do um, yep. in this position. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it, it's it's really a lot of fun. That's awesome. And you touched a little bit on, um, you know, you talked about helping others, helping customers. Can you tell me about one of your most fulfilling moments with a customer? And maybe you can anonymize anything that needs to be anonymized, but anything come to mind? Um, so it's, I won't call out a particular situation um, yeah. because it happens, the, the, the situation I would have described happens multiple times it's just the minor details will change um, and it's mm -hmm. usually when i am able to a customer will come to us and report a problem usually it's a brand new problem we haven't seen it before it tends to be it, it might be a bug um, or it might be something that was you know that's being done incorrectly like accessing an api uh, mm -hmm. the wrong way or feeding in wrong information. But the overall scenario is usually, you know, they come in high priority because of, you know, whether it's customer pressure that they need to get this done mm -hmm. or in our case, like a, a box, uh, a Vectra brain or a particular sensor might not be working. And so they don't have any visibility into that part of their network mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. or the overall system, which makes them vulnerable. Um, yeah. So it'll be some high priority, um, some urgent situations around, and then um, new issue and we'll mm -hmm. dig, dig, dig. It takes me, you know, however long, an hour, two hours, better part yeah. of a day, who knows, because it's a new issue. So depending on the part of, of um, the the appliance or the system or the platform that it's uh, that it's presenting itself in, but eventually what will happen is we'll engage engineering. They'll start working on it. We'll all the person that I am and a lot of our support team is. We'll continue to also um, support and triage and work alongside engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we will. Uh, uh, the best part is when we get to be the right beat in this situation, engineering to the root of the bug. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I found it. Here's what it is. <laughs> one little tricky thing um, um, is blocking all of this and then yeah. able to just go into the customer's appliance if they have remote support enabled um, or working with them on a remote session and you know, making that change um, or providing the workaround that I, that we were able to uncover um, while and then getting them unblocked and up and running again. Uh, mm -hmm. That's usually, that's my favorite part that or what I find yeah. the most fulfilling. And like I mentioned, it's not with one particular customer because right. that scenario happens. So I can give you one, customer story, but I can, you know, have it had it happen. I've had it oh, yeah. that happen makes multiple times. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that usually that that really makes me happy. Um, that's awesome. And then the customer obviously is, you know, happy, happy as, well as well to yeah. not yeah. have to wait a month for a release or a week yeah. or 
you know, a few days for a hot fix to be pushed out or something right. like that. So Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's really good. I, I think that like it double downs on the whole thing about novelty and like you are a problem solver. You're almost even like an investigator in a way. Like you kind of dig deep into the product and you help you also get to tap into your like the side where you really want to help a customer too. So that's really awesome, Fluke. I really love that. Um yeah. okay. Second to last question, since we're going back to your fun fact at the very end, um, <laughs> to you, what do you think makes Vectra different from the market, from what you've seen so far in your past five years in cybersecurity? How much time do we have? Because it's a long list. Um, <laughs> Why don't you pick the top one, no. the top, top point here? <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, we can talk about all the technology and mm-hmm. all the advances in AI that we've done and how much more accurate we are when it comes to attack signal intelligence. Um, And yes, that is wonderful. That's the top of the list. And that definitely does differentiate Vectra uh, to the rest of the field, or we can go into um, how dynamic our platform is Mm-hmm. and how we can uh, work with you know customers in a variety of environments from small businesses to the largest enterprises right, right. Um, but really to me beyond all of that what truly sets Vectra apart is the company culture mm-hmm. and how well we work internally as a company um mm-hmm. and that really makes things turn um for the better uh of our of all of our customers so yeah. you know being in support and being in this position where we work with so many different teams and the or departments within the company um where daily talking to engineering and multiple parts of engineering, um, product management, our uh, wonderful account teams, our sales security engineers, our amazing MDR team. Um, I get to see a lot of that and just the collaboration that happens behind the scenes that our customers um, may not you know see on a daily basis um or see at all but it really does um when it's you know a security engineer makes a customized request on behalf of a customer uh the engagement that they get is usually very quick and Mm -hmm. you know like how open our engineering team is with the whole company is something that's very unique usually um a lot of companies and and bigger companies at that are very like siloed off um right yeah um but here you know there's a we have a a, a global like vectra engineering channel that anybody in mm-hmm. the company can pose questions to them and they're mm-hmm. you know they're willing to help right away um and so that collaboration customer first mentality uh, mm-hmm. as a company right and uh, yeah. the, another one of our core like no drama teamwork mm-hmm. that is very true and i see it you know day to day and mm-hmm. i see how quickly we can run things to help our customers mm-hmm. and really care about our customers and and really do care uh, that they're you know protected in this increasing cybersecurity threat mm-hmm. landscape that we live in. Um, so, to me, yeah, yes, we are amazing um, at all of the technology and the platforms and everything else. But truly, how the company culture and the company is is. Uh, ran internally um, yeah. with the focus on customers is, is really what sets us apart. Yeah, that's that's you really put it into great words there, Felipe. I think 
my time at Vectra, like it's just I what I've been experiencing is a bunch of really, really smart people working together to do something pretty awesome. Like, you know, building the technology behind Vectra, you yeah. know, it's like a trickle down, like it's awesome in here. So we give awesome stuff to our customers. Right. So, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. And that's one of the reasons why we started this segment on our podcast channel is just to highlight the great people behind Vectra, such as yourself. So to wrap this all up, you mentioned that you wanted to talk about a fun fact. Uh, Did you come up with one? (laughs) I think so. Um, I'll put it, I'm an avid uh, soccer fan. I Mm -hmm. love soccer, grew up playing soccer. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's my little fun fact. Do you have a Uh, favorite team? uh, Yes, in multiple countries. (laughs) So I'm Brazilian. Um, My favorite team in Brazil is Fluminense. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also follow European soccer, uh, the, in Spain, it's Real Madrid, mm-hmm. in England, Manchester City, Manchester uh, City. Germany, <laughs> yeah, I like Bayern Munich, um, Italy, Juventus guy, so, yeah, um, that's awesome. There's my little fun fact. <laughs> Sorry, well, it's not more exciting. But, no, yeah. no, that's fine. I wish I knew more about football, um, soccer, <sighs> if you may, to chat about with you. But if anyone watching this wants to reach out <laughs> and talk to Felipe about soccer or football, please do so. And, yes. um, well, thank you so much, Felipe, for your time and just chatting through everything. It was really great to know you, and I hope the viewers here also um, felt like it was a great conversation to listen in on. Um, and we are going to be continuing this Stories from Support segment um, on our podcast channel, on our YouTube, if you haven't checked our YouTube out. We are also on Spotify as well. Um, and once again, thank you so much, Felipe, for your time. And um, that's it for now. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Zoe. Bye. Thank you, everybody.